Is it tonight? Waiting for the bus in the rain in the rain. Wait, waiting for the bus in the rain. Waiting for the bus in the rain in the rain. Wait, waiting for the bus in the rain. Waiting for the bus in the rain in the rain. Wait, waiting for the bus in the rain. Waiting for the bus in the rain in the rain. Wait, waiting for the bus in the rain. Stop requested. Welcome back to the next episode of Stop Requested. I am Brad. This is... Justin. Justin. You know what my favorite part of the week is? Uh, no. Going to work. It's something we all have to do eventually. I love it. You know, famous people had to have jobs too. It sounds like you're going somewhere with this, Brad. <laughs> well, I am, Justin. Let me tell you about it. Ah, okay. I have here a list of exclusive celebrities and uh, some of their first jobs when they were little celebrities. So uh, let's take a look here. Pope Francis, did you know that before he was Pope, he was actually a bouncer at a nightclub in Buenos Aires? He made that up. I don't think it's made it. It's on the internet. Oh, okay. And then Barack Obama, he used to work at Baskin and Robbins in Honolulu. So he is a U.S. citizen. Evidence points to yes. Okay. Uh, and then Megan Fox. Apparently, she had to cover up and wear a banana suit. I don't know this Megan Fox. For a smoothie shop. You don't know Megan Fox? No. She was in the Transformers movies and a bunch uh, of other... Transformers. Horrible film. Yeah, they're pretty bad. They're making more. I don't think she's in them. I don't think she's allowed to be in them. The next one's with Marky Mark. I think he likes Mark Wahlberg now. Okay. Um, and then as a teenager, Mick Jagger. You're familiar with Mick Jagger? Oh, uh, the lead man of Rod Stewart. The Rolling Stones. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he used to be a porter at a mental hospital. Like think. a porter? Like, like people at the car dealership that wash and detail cars? No, I think when you're a porter at a mental hospital, you're just pushing people around in a wheelchair. You don't get to detail them, though? I suppose if they've got, like, food on their chin, you'd wipe it off for them. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and then actress Amy Adams. I really don't know who she is. She was Name in... Name a movie! She was in, uh... She's in a lot of the comedies, but she's going a little bit more serious. She's in, um, Is she in The Fighter? She might be. She's... Not Mark the, Wahlberg and, and Batman? She's not the Dallas Buyers Club. She's in some movie, though, with with uh, the Christian Bale. Batman. Not in Batman, but yes, a movie with Christian Bale that was Is she Batman. the redhead? She is redhead. Yeah, I know who she is. Yeah, I want to say she was in Talladega Nights. She was in The Fighter, trust me. Okay, I believe you. Anyway, uh, apparently she was saving to buy a car, so she was a Hooters girl. For uh, roughly two months. I don't know why they know two months. But. Don't you have to have. Uh, I guess she's got. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then Rod Stewart. Uh, he used to be a grave digger. He used to work in a cemetery. Digging graves. That's kind of creepy. Do you think he could do that? Uh, yeah. Maybe. I I don't know. Uh, cemeteries freak me out. I go for walks a lot, and I walk by the cemetery at night, and I get scared. I got a big flashlight with me. Well, you should carry a flashlight in general. Just, I mean, it's safety. Right. Yeah. I mean, is it big enough to, like, use as a bludgeon? No. Is it but bludgeon? It's, it's bright enough to where it could uh, temporarily blind you while I run, run away. But your run would last, like, 15 seconds, and then you'd be exhausted. But that's a 15-second head start over any zombies. Yeah, but zombies move at, like, a steady pace. They don't tire. You so don't it know that. It doesn't matter what kind of head start you get. Are we talking zombies from, like, you know, from, like, The Walking Dead? Are you talking zombies from 28, was it 28 Days Later? I don't think they were really zombies in 28 Days Later. Yeah, I've had this argument before, but they're still human-like things trying to eat and kill other humans. So in that regard, they're kind of like zombies. But they're not going to be around the graveyard. They're going to be everywhere. Zombies don't just hang around graveyards, though. <laughs> but they crawl out of their grave. 
Or you're bitten and you turn into a zombie. I think the bitten zombies would... Is Are we just saying we should wait and see to like... I don't think the zombie apocalypse is ever going to happen. Oh, there's a lot of people that are hoping it will. They're called Canadians. Did you know that they actually prepare for zombie apocalypse? Like they the run drills. Is? Yeah, the country is. They have a zombie apocalypse drill. Where I, did you see this? The internet, so it's true. <clears throat> well, that's disheartening. All right, All right back to jobs. Uh, Christopher Walken, as a kid, uh, it says here that he joined a circus and he took an unpaid job with a small act and even did a little lion taming, even though he later claimed that the lion was very old and really more like a dog. You'll have to excuse my friend. <laughs> you don't like that, Christopher Walken? I think everybody can do it. I don't think everybody should. I don't think everybody can do it. And that was probably one of my better attempts, though. Well, then you swung for the fences. <laughs> Anyways, uh, one of my... Brad's got a story he really wants to share, and even I'm really I excited. don't even know about this story. So. so, Justin and I used to work at an ice rink together, and the ice rink closes at various times at night. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of these times, I was on my way home, and uh, it was late at night. It was probably 1 or 2 in the morning. And I get to the gas station, because I was almost out of gas, and the lady behind the counter, she's like, ooh, it's cold out. It was probably one of those... You know, Michigan January nights where it's like two degrees outside, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Well, I work at an ice rink, so I'm, I'm used to it. You know, it's winter year round there." And she's like, "Oh, what do you do at the ice rink?" And I said, "Well, I, I drive a Zamboni, and uh, you know, I, I resurface the ice." And with a serious face, she goes, "What's a Zamboni? Some sort of a pizza?" <laughs> It doesn't even make sense. No, it doesn't. Like, I would just drive a slice of pizza around. You so just, then, you clearly, wait, wait. You clearly said you drive. It gets better. Did she think that you were driving, like, delivery to people on the, I don't understand her thought of no, logic. No, and I believe I even said an ice resurfacer, a Zamboni. There's lots of people, just to clarify, that don't know what a Zamboni is. That's, that's fair. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt, and I said... I drive it in between hockey periods and in between figure skating events. And she follows that up with, so when would you ever need to do that? I don't know where she's going with this. Like, like Again, I just want to reiterate, I've never heard this story ever before. So after I told her when you would use it, she asks me, why would you ever need to do that? So in between hockey periods and in between figure skating events. I'm just trying to think of what she's thinking. I... I don't think she was thinking much. If okay, but you have to remember the hockey. Well, this the skating community in in general is pretty small. They don't. If you're not a part of that community, you don't understand that the ice gets chewed up. Right. Is I mean maybe. I, anyways, go on. Not, nothing that I said warranted her question, her follow up questions. Okay. Like I gave her all of the information that she needed. And it's still, it's like, not only was the wheel not spinning, there wasn't even a hamster to spin the wheel. Okay. Know? Yeah. So. Hadn't she been drinking? She was working. I don't think she was drunk. She did not. Oh, she was working at the gas station. She was station. working at the gas station. She was on the other set end of the counter. I think I might know who you're talking about because it's always the same two or three people that work at a Meyer gas station at two in the morning. But yeah. It was not a Meyer gas station. It was the Speedway. It's lame. Oh, so. well, same difference. Anyways. But, uh... Why would I just assume? I, well, there's... Anyways, there's a gas station right there. But, yeah, it just... That blew me away. And her lack of comprehension of what I was saying just sort of uh, halted me in my tracks. And mm -hmm. I... I didn't know. I was just like, okay. Does she keep... Does this, does this get worse? No, this is pretty much the story oh. here. But I, I just thought it was fascinating enough that, you know, after I explained the situation to her, that she didn't, she still couldn't comprehend okay. it. So, but I liked working at the ice rink. Uh, I mean, there are situations and daily events that you don't care for, but uh, one of those events was a time when you had to pick out poo in a urinal. And, uh... Do you want to share your end of the story? Oh, I guess I don't have a choice. <laughs>
Ah, uh, well, this is the day Brad and I are working. Yeah. And we have, at the rink, we have our own amateur hockey association. I think the, you called me on the radio, though. The town doesn't need to be uh -huh. included. The, the actual... Yeah. Let's just say it's just a group of young kids learning and being coached on how to play hockey. Right. They're older now, though. This, this well, but yes, they are, this particular three kids are older. Yeah. But the, the ages are from, what, 3 to 15, 16? I mean, as soon as you can skate, it's time to play so hockey. So, like, 3 from till, till I think the oldest you can be is 15 or 16, and then it's high school hockey and what have you, what not. Uh, well, this group, three kids to be exact, <coughs> decided, I don't know how should I approach this, so should I approach it from that or from, the rate from when I got addressed from the adult leaguers? The adult leaguers told you? Yes. Because I thought this was uh, during locker room sweeps before the adult leaguers came in. No, the adult leaguers approached me. Anyway, okay, okay. so I'll so, approach you. Yeah, let way. me know from the adult leaguers. So the next group of guys that were supposed to take the adult were our, our adult league hockey players. These guys are anywhere from 20 to 50, whatever. And they asked me to come down to their locker room, so I you know, respectfully did and went down there and Found out that there was a uh, a poo in the urinal, and so I did the math, and it turned out that the last group of people that used that locker room were, was an AHA group, and these kids were I thirteen, probably 13, twelve or thirteen. Sure. And they had managed to have two lookouts while the third kid pooped in the urinal. Now this is their home rink. So it's not like they're on the road and they're destroying someone else's property. They're destroying their home rate, which makes it even worse. But I didn't want to have to clean this by myself. I mean, who the heck would want to have to clean this by themselves? And plus, I wanted to share the experience. And the only other person I could think of was Brad. So I bring him down. I get and, a call on the radio, and I don't remember exactly what you said, but I knew right away... I couldn't get it out. I remember laughing a lot. <laughs> it was going to be an adventure when I got to the locker room. I knew that. Yeah. So he came down and he couldn't even make it two feet in the locker room. It was a combination of his gag reflex. And I, I didn't come within 30 feet. Of no, you were not. I, but then he was laughing so hard that he couldn't make it in. So I didn't know how to approach it. I mean, how do you approach that? Honestly, do you like get a broom and a dustpan? Do you get one of those like the grabber things, you know? The grabber. The best thing I could think of is just double bagging it <laughs> with some latex gloves and scooping it out with my hand. So I mean, I I did it, but uh, I you made were laughing like a mad scientist the entire time. Well, how else are you, <laughs> you gonna like, react when your like, hand scooping? Like you were holding poop out. <laughs> you were holding your creation in your hand. You're just like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I remember I your I laugh made me laugh. It wasn't an evil laugh. It was an uncomfortable laugh. Like, how else are you supposed to handle this situation? I really felt like your laugh was indicating that you were having a good time. <laughs> I would never, ever have a good time double back. This is a good day up. at work. This is what your laugh was indicating. <laughs> that was definitely on the highlight reel for sure uh, of working there with this no talent, but. <laughs> so. That's my belt, by the way, just so everyone knows. It's, it's squeaking on the chair. Been doing it all episode. It's the chair. <laughs> no, it's not. The, it's the belt. It's for for real too. Um, but the kids did get caught. There was a penalty to pay, right? <clears throat> yeah, we uh, they seem to forget that we had a camera system, and as ingenious as they were to have two lookouts, it actually was the reason they got caught because we could see them on the camera. But right, we uh, we made them do some cleaning stuff over the summer. We put them to work, but um, kudos to those kids. You know, I mean. It would have been a brilliant joke if it wasn't for us having to clean it up. Yeah. Or you. Yeah. You know, and me spectating. So but that's. Of. I mean. But you got to remember too, like part of like everyone who think you know, oh it's cool you get to drive a zamboni. Ninety percent of what we're doing is janitorial stuff. Yeah. Like you may see us on the zamboni, but really what we do for yeah. a living is. Uh, vomit, spit, urine. Those were the Fecal good days. That, that's what we do. Fecal or what? Yeah. What you? Fecal you. matter. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So those are our job stories. Do you have any other job stories? You want I've got to? lots of job stories. I've 
literally done everything from I've worked at golf courses, I've cleaned banks. Uh, did I ever tell you about the time um, I went to that bank to clean it and I went downstairs and it was on a Friday and there was just KFC everywhere. Like they had this massive, did I tell you the story? No. Just there was a massive KFC party and I was like, all right, one, you guys suck because you left it for me. But two, I understand it's Friday, it's party, you know. Friday, mm -hmm. KFC, they kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I was a little upset that I had to clean this up. So I always, you know, we're all particular in our own ways. I always started with the upstairs. I don't know if you guys know this, but most banks have a downstairs, which I didn't know until I started cleaning banks. There's like a lobby and a bathroom, bathrooms down there. Um, so I started upstairs, got everything done, dusted, vacuumed, you know, cleaned the mouses and the screens and whatever. Went back downstairs about an hour later and the KFC mess was gone. Now, think about it. I'm the only one in the facility. Like, th clearly there was someone else in there. I, you know, there wasn't no magical, there was no spirit in there or whatever. But still, cleaning a bank at 9 at night by yourself, and you come downstairs, you see a mess, you go upstairs, you come back down in LA, and it's gone. It's a little spooky. So it's not a funny story, but it's a spooky story. But, I mean... This, we could do this for days. There's just so many good stories. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have to continue at another time. I agree. But I think it's time for us to go catch our bus. I would agree. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, comment, like, all that stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, until next time, I'm Brad. Justin. And uh, we will see you later.